AIDS and Hepatitis B are two blood-borne diseases which are causing increasing concern in the workplace. But what is a blood-borne disease? How can it be passed from one person to another? And what can you do in your workplace to reduce your risk of exposure? And finally, what should you do if an incident occurs in which you may possibly be exposed to a blood-borne disease? Blood-borne pathogens are microorganisms which can cause disease. Blood-borne pathogens can be found in infected blood and bodily fluids, such as semen, vaginal secretions, breast milk and other bodily fluids, such as cerebrospinal fluid. There are many diseases which can be caused by blood-borne pathogens. These include malaria and syphilis, but the two most common are hepatitis B and AIDS. Hepatitis B can be a very serious disease. If you become infected with hepatitis B, you may develop symptoms no more serious than the flu. One third of people infected with hepatitis B become carriers that show no symptoms. However, hepatitis B can cause you to be ill for a long time, from two months to a lifetime. If chronic, it can lead to cirrhosis and cancer of the liver. You can be vaccinated against hepatitis B either before exposure or immediately after exposure. Otherwise, hepatitis B is a potentially fatal disease. Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS, is a disease caused by the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, known as the AIDS virus. The AIDS virus can lay dormant in the body for years before actual symptoms appear. It primarily affects you by making you more susceptible to other diseases, which will ultimately be fatal, such as pneumonia and cancer. There is no vaccine currently available for the AIDS virus. Hepatitis B is much more common than AIDS. Some statistics state that more people die of hepatitis B in the world in one day than die of AIDS in one year. There are approximately 5 to 10 HIV viral particles in a teaspoon of blood infected with that disease. There are approximately 500 million hepatitis B viral particles in a teaspoon of blood infected with that disease. Hepatitis B is easier to catch, but you can reduce your risks of exposure to any blood-borne disease by following the same universal precautions. Blood-borne pathogens must find a direct route of entry into the body before infection can occur. This means the infected material must enter through a break in the skin, such as a cut, a burn, a rash like eczema, or through breaks caused by dermatitis or acne. Another direct route of entry is the splashing of bodily fluids into the eyes. Exposure can also occur following penetration by a sharp object. For example, a needle or broken glass which has been contaminated by infected material. You will not catch AIDS from a toilet seat, a door handle or from food which has been prepared by an infected person. You won't catch it from using the same cup or glass, from towels, from coughs and sneezes, from brushing up against someone or from insects. Saliva, perspiration, tears and vomit can contain small traces of HIV, but not enough to cause infection if transmitted. However, blood or other bodily fluids which can transmit HIV may be mixed with saliva or vomit, in some cases resulting in an increased risk of transmission. You won't catch AIDS by sharing eye goggles or a respirator, although it should be normal practice to disinfect a respirator after use. Hepatitis B, on the other hand, is much easier to catch from bodily fluids. For example, the virus can survive in dried blood for some time. Before considering specific responses to the problems of exposure to blood-borne pathogens, we should consider general precautions to reduce accident risks. Through elimination, substitution 
administrative and engineering controls and the use of personal protective equipment, workplace hazards can be reduced. Through the reduction of hazards comes a reduction in accidents and potential exposure to bloodborne pathogens. Good housekeeping improves the overall safety of your workplace. A clean, neat and orderly workplace is a key factor in accident prevention and therefore in reducing the possibility of incidents occurring which could involve exposure to bloodborne pathogens. Taking universal precautions means treating all blood and other bodily fluids as if they were infected. If you come into contact with any blood or other bodily fluid, treat it as if it were infected. If your fellow worker has an accident which causes bleeding, have the victim contain his or her own bleeding if possible. Have the victim bandage the wound to prevent further blood contact. If the injury is more serious, immediately call for the emergency response team and wait for them to arrive. The first aid or emergency response team should wear personal protective equipment, such as disposable latex gloves, when dealing with all patients. These personnel should also have pocket respirators or resuscitation bags available to prevent fluids passing from mouth to mouth. If your action could mean the difference between life and death for your co-worker, you may wish to become involved. Before rushing in, assess the risk. There are also some common sense actions you can take in the workplace. Have infection control kits available at various strategic points throughout your workplace. These can be added to your regular first aid kit. The following items should be included. Disposable latex gloves, eye goggles, and a pocket respirator or other barrier device for CPR. If you can, carry a pair of disposable gloves at all times or have a pair readily accessible. Put them on when you are dealing with any situation where your hands will be in contact with blood or bodily fluids. But check first for holes and tears. When removing the gloves after use, roll the first glove off the hand inside out. Then use the clean inside part of the first glove to remove the second glove. Always wash your hands immediately after taking off the disposable gloves. Never wash or attempt to disinfect disposable gloves for reuse. They must be placed in an approved biohazard bag and taken to a facility licensed for disposal of hazardous waste. Use a pocket respirator or other barrier device when performing CPR. If there is potential for bodily fluids to be splashed into your eyes, you should wear eye goggles. Use anything practical to stop the bleeding and at the same time prevent exposure to blood. For example, a large quantity of paper towels or several thicknesses of clothing. Open wounds where blood is visible are not the only danger for transmission of bodily fluids. Internal injuries, head injuries, burns, abrasions and vomiting can all involve the release of bodily fluids. Remember, a direct route of entry is necessary for infection to be possible. Protective equipment acts as a barrier between infected fluids and the route of entry. What do you do if, in spite of these precautions, you've been splashed with the victim's bodily fluids? The first step is to wash the affected area thoroughly. If you think you could have been splashed in the eyes, use an eye wash to bathe the eyes completely. For other areas of the body, a thorough soap and water scrub is necessary. Wash the area in the workplace which has been contaminated by blood, vomit or other bodily fluids with alcohol or diluted household bleach, one part bleach to nine parts water. This includes any tools or other items which may have been sprayed with the victim's blood or other bodily fluids. Wear rubber gloves when cleaning spills of bodily fluids, but do not use them if they are punctured torn or otherwise damaged. Disinfect the gloves after use and always wash your hands after cleaning up blood or other bodily fluids. If other items like clothing or bandages need to be disposed of, you must use an approved biohazard bag which must then be removed to a facility licensed to dispose of hazardous waste. One of the most common penetrations of the skin in the work environment 
is caused by sharp objects, such as broken glass. Don't attempt to pick up broken glass with your hands, whether or not you see blood on it. Use a broom and dustpan or tongs. Don't carry the glass to a container. Bring the container to the broken glass. Workers handling rubbish can often be cut by broken glass or other sharp objects. Take care when handling rubbish containers. Broken glass and other sharp objects should be placed in a proper, puncture-resistant, leak-proof sharps container, which must not be overfilled. Disposing of feminine hygiene products from restrooms also requires the wearing of protective gloves. Every incident involving exposure to blood or other bodily fluids should be immediately reported to your supervisor and other appropriate personnel. You may also request testing by your company doctor. If you are frequently exposed to the risk of infection because of your occupation or because you are a member of an emergency response team, your employer can vaccinate you against hepatitis B. Again, there is no vaccination against AIDS. AIDS and hepatitis B are realities. You can catch either one if you're exposed to infected blood or bodily fluids. But both diseases, especially AIDS, are difficult to catch unless you put yourself at risk. Be aware of the risks, but don't over-dramatise them. Use common sense and follow the procedures laid down by your organisation and you'll go a long way to keeping your workplace a safe workplace.